Okay, uh, I'm going to start off, uh, you know, Vinita, uh, Vinita Ramani is the AVP and head of marketing and Kishita, one of the fastest growing SaaS companies uh, from India and offering low code and workflow automation software. Vinita has, has over two decades of experience worked with Trampo systems in the past and continues to sort of be the intersection of customer product and sales and of course marketing is at the center of all of this, so it will be great to see how we can have this time. Welcome Vinita. Uh, we have Saudarya uh, Ravi Shikant, who's the business head e-commerce for Kobeen, uh, which is a D2C brand, and I'm sure you'll talk a bit more about, about that. Uh, she's actually a computer science gold medalist, uh, an engineer turned business professional, and her association with Indus Life Sciences, which is a parent company, goes back uh, to 2020. And today she's really building a brand that's uh, you know at the epicenter of, of creating impact and, and with a vision to become the world's trusted wellness ally. So we look forward to hearing more from you. Uh, Anurag uh, is a dear friend who is, we've known for many many years. He's been uh, a client partner lead at Google and a strategic agency manager for uh, seven plus years. Uh, and prior to that, he was working at Ernst & Young. Uh, he's worked across a wide spectrum of clients across digital and, and, and various areas. And of course, Anurag has been uh, you know working closely with the social media team for many many years. And He's, he's very dear friend. Welcome, Anurag. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great. So, uh, we're going to start off with, you know, really uh, talking about uh, innovation, right? So, maybe somewhere I'll start off with you in terms of, often innovation starts with, with an amazing brand and amazing product, right? And I know you focus a lot on making that and bringing that to life uh, for, for Kobe. Maybe we'll start off by talking about how has that shaped up and how the product and the brand is at the center of all of this. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm really glad to be here to be a part of this summit. Thank you so much, Vikash. I'd also like to thank uh, our MD, Mr. Mani, who's also here with us uh, because uh, that he's a reason for this op uh, opportunity, like for me being able to build this health and wellness brand called the Kobe. Uh, just to just to to take a minute to speak about where we are coming from as a company and as a brand. Uh, Indus Life Sciences has been in the pharmaceutical uh, segment and the export industry for over two decades. Uh, so our relationship and uh, our uh, like uh, business uh, has been there for over two decades and our partnership is with over 40 countries to whom we export products in these consumer goods and pharmaceutical segments. So for us, this decision of entering into the Indian market was an organic uh, extension. So we were not one of the brands that were born out of the immunity trend or the fad. Uh, for us, it was like the very organic next step to enter uh, the Indian market and ensure that we leverage our experience that we have from all uh, from around the globe and we take it to the consumers in India. Uh, when it comes to the co being um, as uh, the business model around it, right? So we thought that wellness the way wellness is looked at as a mainstream thing. So we found a white space there. We found that it was either the age old Ayurveda probably not catering to today's consumers or the niche sports nutrition, that kind of a segment. We didn't find that wellness was something that was looked at as, uh, you know, something that would better everyday lives of people. We found a white space there and we thought that um, uh, uh, we should bring in a solution like for consumers to help them like with their ever evolving and fast paced lives. And how we have built this solution is we have made it very concern centric in the sense uh, we have uh, uh, we have gone down to the roots of the problems when we have ensured that our solution will cater to our different consumer segments and we have also kept it very preference oriented. Um, and our solutions are also built with this synergy between uh, nature and science. So when I say that, we have ensured that in our products, so we have well researched and come up with formulations that bring you the best of both worlds. They bring you the power of natural extracts and then they combine it with the power of vitamins, minerals, amino acids and all of that. So, and we've also used uh, state-of-the-art technologies and infused them into our products because our research has shown us that these are the compositions and formulations that work for today's consumer segments. And I'm also proud to say that we are one of the first brands in India to have launched about 45 products in this segment and we launched late last year. Um, yeah, so um, that is that pretty much covers the crux of our brand. And uh, when we say again that we want to become a wellness ally, right? So we are looking at this whole thing as we want to be uh, a friend to our consumers we want to be their ally in the journey to wellness so we ensure that you know they can always maintain this holistic state of mind and body no thanks for sharing that i think that often you need to start with having that amazing brand and product right? only then can you actually move forward and do marketing uh so let me move moving to you uh Rita, right and, and uh, today i think if you ask folks around here 
of who knows of no code development or no code software like something that you can use directly right uh, i think probably many people know but this is kisco started almost a decade ago more than a decade ago uh, how how has the journey been in terms of marketing something that people didn't know marketing something that uh, that you have to educate and and, and i think how has it evolved over, over the last 10 years Uh, so maybe I'll give an example. What happened was, uh, you know, the whole context of no code was more prevalent in the very large enterprises, and people had to shell out a lot of money to buy uh, platforms that would help you build applications. Right uh, at that point in time, Kisflow emerged or found a white space that you know we need to democratize uh, app building, and how do we make that, and how do we simplify it? That's the DNA with which Kisflow was born. so the power of simple is not just a tagline but that's the philosophy with which the product is built we also identified a very niche segment because anurag is here and i wanted to talk about how our association with google started way back so 10 years before we launched our product on the google io platform right uh, in the us so which gave us a head start right with all of those uh, you know the market positioning the target segment we were going after was very unique and to add it all we had a very unique and quirky brand name called kiss flow which kind of uh, uh, piqued everybody's interest to know okay what are you guys up to uh, kiss stands for the principle and then flow attaches the workflow aspects so these were aspects which helped us transition and today as we move and the category becomes more relevant and as you say people know it everybody talks about these uh, this category today we have got a head start over those 10 years because of the association of the brand and that's helping us uh, really build our uh, you know reach in the market now oh, great thanks for sharing that yeah that's a good segue into what i'm going to ask about which is you know google has always been ahead of its time in many things and, and one of the things that's really been picking up in the last few years is the entire creator space short videos short the youtube shorts and i think uh, often when we talk to brands as well that's probably a still an under leveraged uh piece for many brands right can you talk us through how youtube shorts is evolving what what's the what are we seeing brands innovate in that space uh, yeah no i think as you said it's more relevant today than it was a couple of years ago and i think the growth of shorts is in a way reflecting our mentality as consumers now why all of us are marketers and business leaders and again different functions related to marketing we are all also consumers and my favorite example to give in the rise of short form video is actually around stand up comedy and if you any of you if you've seen youtube stand up comedy you probably seen there used to be long 20 minute 30 minute full episodes have you all noticed a shift where suddenly there's 2 minute bite size videos there's a 4 minute section and then there's more short form content we as people are now inherently impatient for more content and shorts is a reflection of that now youtube shorts tiktok meta reels there is there are very few people who are not exposed to any of them but that's also an opportunity for brands now two things that we've seen and what brands are doing particularly well the first one is actually starting to think vertical now most of your time is spent on your phones yes there are those evenings where you'll have your tv screen in front of you your laptop but you spend a lot of time on your phone and a lot of that time the phone is held vertically what youtube has done is actually now whenever you see a short video you see an ad have you observed how it takes over your entire phone it's a full screen experience and that's where shorts and marketers have an opportunity i i remember when shorts wasn't even a thing puma experimented with vertical video and they were obsessed about figuring out whether or not it works so they did a head to head experiment they put a vertical video and a horizontal video in one activity that they did and in the other one they just put horizontal videos and they saw almost a 10 to 12% uplift coming from the inclusion of vertical because your entire consumer attention is on your brand as an advertisement in that instance similarly now shorts i think ruchita mentioned a, a global number we have 30 billion daily views on shorts globally and that's also growing in india a lot of them are india first creators as ruchita had also mentioned that's an opportunity for us as brands to think about how do we leverage the power of these creators and shorts as an ecosystem because our ads products are going there but even without ads there are users who are going there so a brand to be present on shorts could be as simple as a collaboration with any creator and a product integration over there and from an ads perspective it's about thinking vertical and how do you communicate your story in a shorter time window uh, and communicate it in a vertical video format 
Yeah, and I think often when you think about these vertical videos, you have to think about it from the concept, right? Because you can't take that uh, horizontal video and just cut it out. So I think often it has to be at the drawing board and then you kind of take it out. Yeah. So uh, the next question actually to all of you and, and Nita, maybe you can start is, how do you continue innovating in what you're doing? And right? especially for marketers, there's so many moving parts, there are new platforms, there's platforms innovating, uh, there's so many things that are going on. You have your own product journey, your own focus priorities internally. How do you continue innovating and what are the things that help you get that inspiration for you know, continuing that innovation? Uh, so, as an organization, I think you need to have a culture of innovation. That should be the base because uh, if the organization doesn't allow you to try new things, you're not, you're actually not letting anybody in the team do it, right? Uh, the other aspect I think we do personally is uh, we set aside a good amount of budget towards uh, innovation. Uh, there's close to 20% of our uh, expenses go towards trying new things, not really, you know, evaluating only in terms of what outcome or what benefit is it going to get. So sure, Google and the platform, very I'm happy important. to hear that. <laughs> uh, no, in fact, that's one thing we do. Uh, you know, sometimes a lot of digital spends happens out there because yeah. the tried and tested models give you ROI, which you can predict, but the future depends on what are those new, new innovations we do. In fact, uh, you know, as a B2B brand, as we move more towards, I'm sure you all, if some of you in the uh, B2B segment know about how account-based marketing is taking off, intent campaigns are taking people you you know you're going from mass marketing to more sniper targeted so how do you do that how do you analyze who is the buyer reach him even before he even realizes that he is in the in market so these are aspects uh, which require you to try test and uh, succeed uh, which can only happen if you stop putting the lens of roi in the very beginning of investment uh, which can happen if you have innovation mindset so that's one aspect I think I would uh, urge everybody to look at at an organization. We try to do that. Uh, for us, uh, I would say we draw inspiration from our vision firstly, when we say we want to become a consumer's wellness ally. So uh, we want to build a very experience led journey for them. So how are we actually implementing this feedback loop in place? So we want to ensure like there are so many multiple like different touch points right from the point of awareness through engagement, bringing them, uh, making the, I mean, getting them to make a purchase and then from the purchase through the product getting delivered and after that the post purchase journey. So we have this entire thing planned and, you know, we want to ensure like we give a very value driven engagement for the consumers throughout this because it's no longer about just selling the products to them. As a brand, as a brand we have to reside in the minds of our consumers. So we even recently deployed our uh, marketing automation platform, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, like with the social media team. So uh, there we have like uh, the opportunity to leverage all our different marketing channels in one place, uh, yeah. WhatsApp, SMS, email and all of it up until we can send the audience uh, I mean back to we can run ads as well from the platform and we have journeys that we can plan here so you know um, at every single like touch point we want to ensure that we do uh, provide the best value to the customer like we have like ops protocols in place so are we responding to them on time sometimes you have to give that benefit of doubt to the consumer so are we uh, like how are we actually ensuring the customer is satisfied at every different point in time because they are our advocates today eh? and they are also our co-creators today because they love to build the brand brand with us so it's no longer about just sending them out like pricing or promotion based campaigns emails or uh, like whatsapp messages so they love to be involved with you if you ask them like what is the next next product that we have to launch for you where do you think we even like for example run a campaign asking them like we want to uh, start offline uh, ads in like the movie theater channels so which theater do you often go to in Chennai so we took their responses and based on that now we are planning to run ads on that channel so this way you know they are your co-creators and they are your advocates and you have to ensure you you have this feedback loop in place and you keep constantly innovating around like uh, what the consumers want from you yeah keep listening to consumers and putting that back into your strategy yes. yeah interesting idea. i'll actually build on a point that we that you mentioned so similar to you google's internal marketing teams the teams that run ads for google they actually have a mandate for 20 percent of their budget to go into experiments and they